What up, everybody? Instructor Beats back again here with another awesome math lesson. Today, we're going to be talking about prime and composite numbers. So let's take a look at what our objective is today. Our objective today, today I will be able to define what a prime and composite number is and be able to figure out numbers 1 through 100 if they are prime or composite. So we're taking the definitions and doing a little bit of application. But let's start with some math vocabulary. So a lot of you guys probably just came from our factors lesson, right? And so prime and composite numbers are all about factors, okay? Um, and if you don't know what factors are, go please step out of this lesson, go check out our factors lesson and come back. But a prime number are whole numbers that have exactly two factors, right? One in itself. In other words, you can only draw one array for this number. Let me give you an example. So an example of a prime number would be seven, right? Because the only factors that you can use to multiply and make seven or whole numbers, right, would be one and seven. You could do seven times one, but community property tells us that, tells us that's the same thing, right? So if you had an array, you could have one times seven this way, or one times seven that way, but it's still the same array, right? It has the same dimensions. And of course, if you did our factor lesson right, you know you could write this with a factor rainbow. I like to write it like that sometimes, right? But in your factor rainbow, there are only going to be two numbers, right? One in itself. So seven is an example of a prime number. A composite number is a whole number that has three or more factors, right? In other words, you could draw more than one array for a composite number. Let's take a look at an example of a composite number, right? So an example of a composite number would be 25, okay? Because if you had, you could do one times 25, right? There we go. And then you could do five times five. So in your factor rainbow, you could do, you'd have three factors, right? So 25 is a composite number. Now I'm not gonna go ahead and draw this array for you, right? But you could do one times 25, a really long one, right? With uh, the dimensions of one and 25. Or you could do a square, cause it's also a square number, right? Of five columns with five in each row, right? So you could do two different arrays. Now composite numbers can have more than three factors, but it's gotta have three or more factors. So really this is all about memorization of just the definitions of these words and then be able to work and find the factors of numbers. One big thing that will help you is going to be divisibility rules. Okay, If you know your divisibility rules, it's going to make this a lot easier. Let's take a look at some examples of numbers and see if they are prime or composite. All right, so here we have a list of whole numbers. Right? Remember, prime and composite numbers are, have to be whole numbers. Okay, and for two, most of you guys probably know this, right? But our factors would be one and two. And again, I like to do the factor rainbow. And our visual, visual representation of that would just be one times two, or you could just turn that array, right? And make it two times one that way. But two is in fact a prime number, right? Because it's got exactly two factors. I think that's, that's gonna be big later in this video, but exactly two factors make something a prime number. Our next one is gonna be three, right? And of course, three is also going to be a prime number because only numbers you can multiply together would be one times three or three times one. And then of course, you would have the same visual array, right? There we go. One times three or three times one, but it's the same factors, same dimensions for the array. So three would also be a prime number. Now let's do four, right? And of course, there are two different ways to make four. You could do one times four, or you could do two times two, right? And again, I just like this fact rainbow, but one times four or four times one, two times two, or two times two, right? So you could have two different arrays for this one. And you can see that these have different dimensions, right? It's a different array with different dimensions. So four is going to be a composite number. And again, because it has three or more factors. Let's go to five now, right? So one times five and five times one, that's really the only way you can do that. So again, there would only be one array you could make for this. And of course you could turn that um, the other way, right? And make it five times one, but it's the same array, same dimensions. And then just so we don't get confused, I'm gonna erase these up here as well. So you can see that five would be a prime number, right? It has exactly two factors and it's factor rainbow. So now we have six. 
And of course, we could do one times six, right? But we could also do two times three, right? And so six is divisible by three, and it's divisible by two, right? So we have four factors here. So typically I think about this as multiplication, but as you guys get better and better at this, if you start thinking about divisibility rules, it will kind of help you out. So we'll look at that when we get to our next slide. But here you can see that we could make two different arrays. We could do our one times six, or we could do our two times three, or three times two, right? So six is going to be a composite number. So again, this is all just about knowing the definitions and then be able to label the numbers. Let's take a look at a little bit bigger numbers, but not too crazy. So here we have 10, 13, 14, 15, and 19, right? And so once we kind of start getting some bigger numbers, it's gonna be, we might not know the basic facts. So you might have to use your strategy that we taught you in our factors lesson of listing out the numbers. Or if you know your divisibility rules, that's gonna help uh, make this a little bit easier as well. So here we have 10, and I know of course that my factors for 10 are gonna be one and 10. And I know that this ends in a zero, right? Which means it's gonna be, div other, it's gonna be divisible by five. So I know that I could multiply five times something. Of course, you know, probably two times five. But again, looking at the divisibility rules, right? We can divide these without any remainder. And so you could see that I could make, I have four factors, which would make this a composite number. In my visual representation, I have more than one array, right? I have uh, more than one way to make 10 with my different dimensions using my factors. So now let's do 13. And if we look at our divisibility rules, right, and know those, we can see that 13 is not divisible by anything other than one. So it only has two factors, right, one and 13, which means you can only make one array. So this would be a prime number. So just kind of to speed these up, I'm gonna skip the visual representations for the rest of these because you kind of get that idea. But we know that 14 is an even number, right, which means it's gonna be divisible by two. So it's gonna be a composite number just because it's divisible by two, right? Because you can always do one times 14. And then of course you can do two times seven, right? So this would be a composite number because it has three or more factors. Here we have 15, 15 ends in a five, right? Which means it is going to be divisible by five. So of course you're always gonna have one times 15. This is gonna make this a composite number because I have at least three factors, right? It doesn't really matter how many I have for knowing if it's composite, as long as there's at least three, but that would be one times three. So we have one times 15 and three times five, four factors would make this a composite number. And our last one would be 19. And so 19 um, is kind of a strange one, right? But if we follow our visibility rules, we see we can't divide it by anything other than one. And so our only two factors are one and 19, which would make this a prime number. Now, one thing I want to point out is sometimes when we start to learn these, we tend to think that only odd numbers are prime and even numbers are composite. And while it's true that most even numbers are composite, two is an even number and it's actually prime, right? Now, all the other even numbers are going to be composite. And another thing people want to think about is that um, all odd numbers are prime. And of course, the first couple odd numbers are prime, but we take a look at 15. 15 is an odd number and that's composite. So we can't just think about even and odd all the time, right? We have to actually do some thinking about this. So here I have a little bit of challenge for you, okay? And so you can uh, do this problem one of two ways. You can either do this as a you try problem. So you're gonna pause the video and you're going to go through all the numbers one through 100 using your divisibility rules or whatever way you have to find out factors, okay? And label and, sorry, highlight the prime numbers and with yellow Okay, or whatever color you have, just keep it consistent. And then if you have yellow and green, then do the composite numbers with green. Okay, and again, this might take you a little bit longer if you don't know your divisibility rules, um, but I want you to go ahead and try that. If not, what you can do is, I'm gonna do it in a second. Okay, I'm gonna kind of fast forward through it and we're not gonna talk about each one. And then we'll kind of talk about some of the patterns that we see. Okay, so if you wanna try it by yourself, go ahead and pause it right now and then push play when you're ready to check your work, all right? All right, and so the first one, um, hopefully that you labeled for prime, would be two. Now, we're gonna come back and talk about one in a second. Some of you guys might have highlighted that, but we'll come back. So three is prime, uh, five is prime, seven is, we have 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, 29, 
31, 37, 41, 43, and I'll fast forward the rest. And that is all our prime numbers, okay? So hopefully you got those right. But um, if not, just go back and see the ones you missed. Um, but all of these numbers only have two factors. They're only divisible by one in itself, right? So you can two, two times one, 13, 13 times one, 79, one times 79. Those are the only way with whole numbers to make those numbers. So now I'm gonna do the composite, right? And again, I'm gonna skip one and I'm gonna come back to it, but I'm gonna fast forward through this because obviously the rest of these are going to be green. All right, so. Now all the composite numbers are green. So first thing I want you to take away is there are a lot more composite numbers than prime numbers. It's kind of what makes prime numbers special. Okay, a lot of people actually love prime numbers. They study them, they do a lot of stuff with them, okay? Now, before we move on to talk about some of the patterns hopefully you see, I want to talk about this one right here, okay? One is a special case. It's neither prime nor composite. Let's take a look. If you go back to the math vocabulary, we said prime numbers have exactly two factors. Composite numbers have to have three or more, right? So you could have 10 factors or you could have three factors. It doesn't matter, okay? It makes you composite number. If we make a fact, the only way to make one is one times one. That means the factor rainbow for one is this lonely one right here, right? It does not have exactly two factors. That is why it is neither prime nor composite, right? Um, and so that's just something that maybe some of you guys highlight, but I wanted to kind of point out this is kind of a, a trick or uh, something people try to confuse you on, right? Maybe be a trivia question if you're ever on a trivia show, okay? One is neither prime nor composite. So I want to take a look at these, right? Um, and what are some patterns that we see? So first of all, you see that every even number other than two is composite, right. and that's because all even numbers other than two, well, two is as well, but they're all divisible by two. So they're gonna have at least three. If you take a look at uh, 202, right? You could do 202 times one, or you could do something times two, which would just happen to be 101. Now there might be other ways to get 202, but you have at, um, at least four factors right there, right? Um, and so that automatically is gonna make it composite. So all even numbers other than two are composite. Our next pattern, right, is that numbers that end in five, other than five, are also composite, right? So these are all odd numbers, but they all end in five, which means, like, for instance, 45. Now, there are more factors, but you could do at least 45 times one, and then five times nine, right? Maybe there's not other factors, I don't know, off the top of my head. But that's at least three factors right there with, because it's divisible by five, okay? All these numbers that end in a zero, also going to be composite numbers because A, they're even, and B, uh, they are divisible by 10 as well. So knowing these, you don't have to memorize these, but knowing some of these shortcuts might help you teach this or take a test on if you're trying to study for a test. Thank you so much for checking us out today. We know there's lots of different options online. We really appreciate you spending your time with Instructed Beats. Hopefully this is helpful. Check out our prime and composite number song. If you need a backup, take a look at our factors. And if you are ready to take the next step, maybe check out our prime factorization um, lesson, which would be a, a, a lesson for middle school um, or middle school teachers. But check that out. Again, thank you so much. We appreciate your time. Instructed Beats, out.